Good to see you. Nice to see you again. So you're going to be on the London stage, but if I remember rightly, you get stage fright. Or used oh, to. I have. I got tremendous stage fright. Uh, I was a late bloomer. I didn't start acting until I was in college. I used to act with a wastebasket off stage. But the exciting thing about being in London is uh, this this little kind of question and answer is going to be at the Drury Lane, where Catherine was in 42nd Street for three years. God. So for 16 years we've been married. All I've heard about is all the time at 42nd Street at the Drury Lane. So half of this interest is to go backstage and see her dressing room and see where she spent her three years. Now, I'm looking at my post on the wall, Aspen, Colorado. That's, right. a, that's a very special place, isn't it? It is. No, it's a, it's a magical place. Um, I was first introduced to it by Jack Nicholson right after Cuckoo's Nest in 1975. Did you propose to Catherine and Aspen? I did. Mm -hmm. I did. Uh, and this was very easy to remember because it was a millennium. It was December 31st, 1999. I was figured that was the first smart thing I ever did, so I never would forget uh, when proposed. But we were, uh, both of us were like sick of their dog. We both had the flu. Uh, but I waited till midnight in the uh, beginning of 2000 and proposed to her. And she said no. <laughs> <laughs> All the documented events of what seems now like quite a few years. Um, and now, you know, Cameron out of prison at last. Do you feel, is there some kind of relief now for you that over these few years have you thought, what else can be thrown at me? Well, you deal with everything specifically. I mean, Cameron coming out of prison, Prison doesn't have anything to do with my uh, my uh, cancer uh, and surviving that. Um, but he, he's doing great. I'm sure it'll be time for him to tell this story when he's uh, uh, ready to. I mean, he spent seven years in prison as a nonviolent drug offender, approximately two years in uh, in solitary, um, and uh, I'm sure he'll be prepared to tell to tell a story when he's, uh, when he's ready. Mm. Have you changed a lot over the years with everything that's happened? Well, I don't know if it's everything that's happened, but certainly you get older. <laughs> and, um, you know, and if you've had a, a, a cancer bout, you don't take time for granted. You kind of choose more selectively how you're going to spend your time. Yeah. Was there a moment when you sat and thought, maybe I won't act again? Well, you know, where you're, where you're waiting to find out if you're cancer-free or, or not. You know, you, you go through your, your chemo and your radiation and uh, you've lost a dramatic amount of weight. And um, once this all process is all done, uh, there's that moment you go back in to be tested and all of that to find out whether, uh, whether you're in good shape or not. So, sure, there's, a, there's a, always a moment. And I presume no, nothing prepares you for anything like that. No, but you know you don't have much choice, do you? Mm. So I think that's really the way um, uh, I say, and that's a great British attitude, quite honestly. You know, mm. you just kind of get on with it, don't you? Yeah, this yeah. stiff upper lip and all. Exactly. Uh, and all that. So a certain age when you say, "We've got to explain that, mummy and daddy are world famous, and there's going to be a lot of attention." No, I think they they get a sense of that uh, in the same way that um, you know I was brought up with my father. And you just see that as part of the process. One of the beauties of our business is that your children can actually see what you do. Is there a little bit of the, you know, the, the acting side of it being more like the childlike side and the producing side being the grown up? Is well, it a bit sure. like that? No, you're absolutely <laughs> right. I mean, I mean, you know, acting is, is make believe. You know, uh, uh, Dylan, my kid, when he was young, he said, I do that in the park every day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just, it's like, it's, it's childlike and you're only responsible for thinking about yourself. Whereas producing is the adult part of, of watching a whole production. That's why I don't like doing them together at the same time as they conflict. But otherwise, um, it keeps me honest. And let's talk it, Dad. 100 this year in December. Unbelievable. Eh? No, it really is. And I mean, uh, Preface to us doing this interview, Ross, I just saw that um, uh, Dad's going to have sort of a retrospect at the British film BFI um, uh, South Bank, yep. is it is? That's the one. In September. And, you know, as, as 
the years go on for me, I get more and more of an appreciation for what he's accomplished and for some of the roles he's done. So um, I hope a lot of your uh, viewers get a chance to get down there and see some of the really great films that he's done. I remember the first show I did, and he came back and said, Michael, you were absolutely terrible. <laughs> you were just... And he was so relieved because he thought, oh, I don't have to worry about my son becoming an actor. He was so bad. And, um, you know, and I, I kind of just stayed with it and, you know, kept working at it. And a few shows later, he came back and said, not bad. Um, brilliant to see you as always. Thank uh, you, Ross. Great to see you. Ed, have a brilliant time in London. Thank you. Back on stage there. We can't Thank wait you. to see that. And, um, and we'll see you in a movie very soon, too. I hope so. Thanks, Ross. Thank you, Good sir. to see you again. Thank you. If you'd like to see even more great guests, then click here. Steve's one of the funniest people I've ever, and you will ever, anyone, any one of us will ever be around. Uh, so it's, again, totally contagious. Like, there's this one scene where we're all supposed to be laughing and carrying on and having this, like, fabulous time at this table before Jesse comes and approaches and says hi. And it's been a long time since he's seen us, and uh, we're supposed to just be laughing at the top of the take. We have nothing to laugh at. He literally just looked at all of us and just went like, <laughs> And like, we're like hysterically laughing at his fake laugh. 